Hi, I'm Coach Amber, and welcome to the Meet RX Success Story Podcast. Today, we have John with us, and he's going to tell us a little bit about his success story. Welcome, John. Hello. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, John, tell us, what was your life like prior to starting a meat-based diet? Were you having any kind of health issues or, like, what kind of diet lifestyle were you following? Anything you want to add? Uh, sure. Uh I'd start by saying in my, in my mid twenties, I was extremely healthy. Uh, I thought I, I followed a, a very strict paleo diet. I was a uh, hardcore into CrossFit. Uh, did it for years, uh, multiple workouts a day, five, six days a week. I mean, it was, it was my life. Uh, I'm about five ten at that point. I weighed one eighty five. Uh, you know, I, I consider myself to be extremely fit. Um, fast forward 10 years, uh, 36 years old. Uh, had a baby, uh, who, who's awesome. And, uh, you know, when, when the baby came along, everything changed. My wife and I pretty much stopped doing CrossFit. Uh, she did it until literally, uh, the week before he was born. Uh, so, you know, I have a very clear timeline in my mind of when things started to go bad. Uh, and it was about the time he was born. Um, I just stopped working out and, uh, got lazy and then started to, uh, really just destroy my diet. Um, you know, I was, I hadn't been paleo for a while, uh, but I started to eat basically, you know, your standard American diet. I was, you know, buying frozen pizzas and eating chicken tenders and wings and French fries and sweet potato fries and, you know, you name it. It was, you know, any kind of junk food I could get. I was, uh, not really counting calories at all. I mean, I'd really, really definitely let myself go. And then the icing on the cake was, uh, it, it, you know, I guess it kind of snuck up on me, but started, uh, started drinking beer pretty regularly, like on weekends. And, you know, I guess one thing led to another. And, and before I knew it, I was like all into IPAs and, and trying different things. And then I was drinking, you know, beer four or five days a week. And then it's all weekend. And, and, uh, anyway, so on top of a bad diet, I was, you know, definitely consuming too much alcohol. So, uh, that was, uh, that was my life before, uh, carnivore. <laughs> that beer will get you every time, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you're eating, you're eating a, a bad diet, and then on top of it, you're stacking on, you know, 800 calories of basically carbohydrates, which I think we all know what happens when you do that. So, anyways, yes, I went we from, do. I went from, uh, you know, super fit 10, 12 years ago to, I mean, really rock bottom. I, I don't, I don't have a scale, you know, but, you know, when I was 185 at a 32 inch waist. Um, you know, recently in, in the couple of years past, I was around a 34, 36 and, uh, my 38, uh, my 38 inch pants were getting real tight. So I would have guessed I was, I don't know, 240, 245, maybe 250. Um, you know, just, it got extremely uncomfortable. I hear you. <laughs> I know exactly how that feels. So yeah. when you first started a uh, carnivore or meat based diet, um, how did you implement it? What did you eat? Like how often did you eat? What did you include? Dairy, eggs? Did you fast? Any of those questions? Uh, I absolutely did not fast. Uh, I, what I took was the advice that I that I heard on the heard a lot of people say this on your interviews. It was uh, straight from the Joe Rogan podcast, where uh, Dr. Baker said, eat meat, eat often, eat as much as you want, eat until you're full. And, uh, you know, if you're the average person that works out to be in twice a day and, you know, around two pounds. So I kind of used that as my gauge when I went grocery shopping. And, uh, I mean, literally it was like a, it was a Sunday. It was May 17th. It was a Sunday. The next day I went to the grocery store and I, uh, I just bought a bunch of ribeyes. Like I, I went to Aldi's and I bought like half a dozen ribeyes thinking, this should get me a while. And, uh, literally May 18th started eating just steak. Um, I did have some dairy. I had some, uh, some non-fat Greek yogurt cause that was in the fridge and I wanted, you know, something to go with the steak cause I was still trying to figure out like, you know, how to be a carnivore. Um, but very little dairy, uh, a whole lot of ribeye. Um, and then from there kind of expanded into other cuts of meat cause ribeyes were expensive. So, you know, whether it's skirt steak or flank steak or whatever, I kind of tried every kind of beef there is. Try to stay away from ground beef just because it was, I don't know, felt better for me to be eating steak. But uh, 
I mean, I, I, I jumped all in right on day one and, and pretty much gave up everything except for the water, the meat, and a little, a tiny little bit of dairy. Nice. So did you have any transitional issues? Like some people will experience uh, like diarrhea, stomach upset, uh, fatigue, those kind of things. Did you have anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, going off the, the Joe Rogan thing, you know, when he came in at, uh, I think it was around two weeks into his carnivore month, uh, he said, don't trust your butt. And I fully support that uh, <laughs> for any new carnivore uh, attempts. You know, you got you to watch out. That transition can be awkward. Um, but after that couple of weeks, the, the, the digestive part straightens itself out. Um, as far as energy level or, or anything like that, uh, cause I, cause I kind of like tag teamed changing my diet completely and, uh, zero stop on alcohol. Um, I actually found myself immediately sleeping a lot better. And I don't know if that was because I wasn't drinking or because of the diet change, uh, or, you know, it could have been psychosomatic. I, I really don't know, but, but I, I seemed to number one, sleep a lot better, which I had a lot better energy almost right out of the gate. Um, and then the, the best thing about the diet and it still continues to this day is that, I, I never really feel like hungry. Like I don't, like I don't, I don't have this like sort of like, like subconscious desire to, to eat like a weird thing or, or like, I feel like I'm missing something. Um, so those are like the things that I noticed right away. Like when I ate that, you know, pound ish ribeye, I was, I was set for, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours. Like it was just, it just felt good and I felt good and everything was okay. So I didn't really feel the need to eat anything else or do anything else different. Awesome. So with, after you have been doing this a while, what were some of the things that you noticed and what was the number one thing that really surprised you that you weren't expecting as far as improvements or changes go? So the, 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 the years, years, and I, I do mean literally years, the years that I was strict paleo, I was a big believer in the diet, uh, but I always felt like I was craving something else. And and after like the initial weight loss phase, loss phase when you're in paleo, kind of like carnivore, you lose a bunch of weight, kind of right out of the gate. After that, it, you know, when I got to my comfortable weight, um, I started having these ridiculous cheat days. Like, I, it was like my thing on Wednesday. Wednesday was my cheat day. Like Wednesday night, I would eat two uh, medium Domino's pizzas and drink a six pack of like gluten free beer. Cause like, I just like, for whatever reason I had to get like, whether it was calories or something, you know, I just had to cheat. So the, the biggest thing for me is really, you know, I, I don't have any desire to eat anything other than what's in the carnivore diet. And I, and I have added dairy. I'm a big, I, I like cheese uh, for me. It's a, it's a good snack to go to. Uh, not that I snack a ton, but, you know, it's always there. I don't have to cook it. You know, it's, re it's ready right away. Uh, so I do, I do eat a lot of cheese. But the biggest thing for me overall is no cravings, no cravings for junk. That's awesome. So, so how do you feel? I mean, do you have more energy? Do you, uh, what else has changed? There, I, I hear so many stories about, you know, just overall health, just, you know, improving so, so much. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, mental clarity, really. Um, there was a, you know, there was a point in time where, where I started to realize, like, you know, names are coming to me faster. Uh, you know, I work with numbers a lot at work, so so statistics were just popping into my head. Uh, acquaintances, acquaintances I hadn't talked to in a long time. You know, I could remember details from the last time I spoke to them. Um, and then kind of kind of continuing with that, you know, I, energy level is great and, and I, I sleep like a baby and I, and I, you know, I wake up and I feel well rested and I, I don't have any like, like nagging soreness or like weird creaky bits. Like when I get out of bed, I'm just ready to get out of bed and, and you know, get up and kick ass. Uh, so, so I would say like being mentally sharp uh, is a huge benefit. And I attribute that completely to the diet. I mean, I, there's, I've never felt this good before. And, and the people that I tell about, carnivore they're like oh you're nuts you're eating meat it's like yeah trust me like you have no idea how good i feel like you just i feel bad for you if you don't try it 
because because this shit's amazing. I love that. That's awesome. Between that and watch your butt, <laughs> that's my favorite. Yeah, thing. yeah. You don't don't trust your butt. <laughs> don't trust the butt. <laughs> that's funny. Well, John, it has been a pleasure talking with you, and I'm so glad that you have found success and you're doing well and healthy and happy, and you look very healthy. So, you know, awesome. And thanks again for coming on the Meet RX podcast. Yeah, thanks for having and me. Hi, John.